My name is Blossomy Ketavong. I'm the marketing and program manager here at Stoke. Um, so I, I get to do wonderful things like facilitate lunch and learns and ask me anything um, with past Accelerate Her graduates. Um, thank you all for joining today. Um, as you know, we opened the Accelerate Her applications on July 15th and they will close on the 22nd. Um, it's a fairly short Google form, so that's the first step of the process. Um, and then there's an interview um, after that if you're selected to move forward. Um, but yeah, today we're going to hear from Julie, Lilia, and Candice, who were all part of the first cohort in 2020 um, for the program. And Heather Gregory just dropped in the chat um, the link to the application. She's here representing Stoke. She is one of the program administrators. Um, and Donna Lisa is from TWU, the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Um, so they will probably be able to pop in and answer some questions um, that might be more program administration related. Um, so yeah, we can go ahead and get started. Um, Lilia, Julie, and Candice, if you will each um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your business, um, maybe a little bit about your business why to kind of kick things off um, and maybe let people formulate questions. Um, that'd be great. So I'm just going to let y'all volunteer. Or I'll choose someone. Lilia, you're up. <laughs> hi. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. My name is Lilia Whittington, and I run the blog Just Lilia, which is a blog based here in Denton, Texas. And when I was a part of the Accelerate Here program, I did the program through the D Diaries LLC, which is my LLC that kind of started this whole shebang that is Just Lilia. So I started blogging about... Uh, almost five years ago when I was in college and I was a fashion design major and I had such a strong passion for fashion and sharing about my love for fashion, especially here in the DFW Metroplex. But what I quickly discovered was that everybody wanted to share their passion for fashion in the DFW Metroplex with DFW being actually the top lifestyle um, blogging capital in the United States. So there was a lot of competition. So what the Accelerate Her program helped me achieve was finding my niche and finding diversity within my own blog and figuring out what works and what's gonna set me apart and what's gonna actually in the long run you know, benefit my business and grow it to be what it is today. And so one of those things was um, focusing on the local community. So since the Accelerate Her cohort, I have hosted a yearly charity event called the Give Back Market. We actually just did our second annual one last week, where we collaborate with the entire community, get everybody together, um, and we raise funds for a local nonprofit. The first year was Project Beauty. This year was Denton County Friends of the Family. And in total, through the give, both Give Back Markets, we've been able to raise just over um, $2,500. So that's the power of community. And that's really what I strive to do with my blog is showcase the power of community. Nowadays, you can find me on TikTok um, sharing sewing tutorials to just about 40, just over 45,000 uh, people. And on Instagram, you can find me sharing sustainable hacks, whether it be local or a uh, small business space. So that's what, and then my cat Toff is joining us for the conversation. So that's a little bit about what I do and what I've learned from the Accelerate Here program. And I'm going to popcorn to Candice. <laughs> Thank you, Lilia. It's so good to see Julie and Lilia's and Heather and Lessening Spaces today. I haven't seen you guys in a while. We'll have to catch up, but that is another story. Um, I am Candice Anderson and I am founder of Factory, which is a fashion Enneagram for women. We have done a huge pivot since I started as the founder of Department, which was a shopping solution for, for women. And um, I joined the Accelerate Her program because I was really looking to grow in some key areas of my business and of my business journey of being an entrepreneur, being a founder of a startup. And um, I got absolutely that and more. I like to say that I feel like Accelerate Her was like my accountability partner slash therapist slash like burst of energy 
you know, because you sometimes as an entrepreneur can kind of get in your head or just not see people, you know, other than family and stuff. So it was just such a wonderful experience for me. And I'm really happy to be able to continue to support and do things like this. Um, and then in terms of where my business is today, we're in the R&D phase as we've kind of shifted into focusing more on creating an actual Enneagram out of um, fashion choices to really make it a tool for women to help them understand why they choose what they do, how to use it as a tool, how to give themselves a burst of energy or a burst of confidence or whatever they need to accomplish for the day. And also since um, I was in the cohort, I've started back working full-time as well. So I'm back in that season that some of you might be um, familiar with, which is your entrepreneurship being your side hustle until it's your main hustle. But I'm sure you guys know that this is all just a journey and I'm super here for it and hope to be able to support you ladies as well. And Julie, I guess that means you're next. Thanks, Candice. It's good to see you too and hear about um, where you are on your journey now. I am Julie James and um, I'm an educator, a designer, uh, entrepreneur, innovator. And, um, and I was, when I was in Accelerate Her, I started as the, I was the co-founder of Playable Media. We were an um, ed tech company. We had created, uh, we did game design, um, game production and game tools for um, for teachers to put into classrooms to use uh, to support the ways that they're teaching curriculum to to kids today. We had pivoted. It's funny to to see like these little spots on the journey. We had pivoted a little bit because it was right at the beginning of COVID, and we had gone from designing games and stuff like that to creating online learning. And so that's what we did for a couple of years. One of the things that happened um, when I came into Accelerate Her is that was my, you know, playable media was a side gig and it had been for a couple of years and I was teaching full time. And one of the things that um, that came out of my time and collaboration and support uh, being in Accelerate Her was I decided to leave teaching full time and turn my you know, side hustle into my main hustle. And, um, and in that few months that I, that, you know, we shifted and I put my focus fully on my business, we went from, you know, barely breaking even, we were doing work at cost, which also meant though that we weren't paying ourselves. So that was a big loss. Um, while I was in Accelerate Her, that changed. And so we were doing work and able to pay ourselves. And, um, and that was, uh, you know, just one of those really cool shifts. Today, um, today I'm part-time with Stoke actually. And so I've been consulting. I don't do playable media full-time, but I still work for myself full-time. Um, and I get to be a part of a really cool, awesome, creative team. And, um, and that's another thing that I learned is that I really wanted that. And being a part of the accelerator program had given me that in some capacity, you know, in those few months. And so it's just kind of cool to hear about women's journeys. Um, wherever you're at today, this is the kind of program that will really take you to the next level in ways that probably you can and um, cannot even imagine, so. Awesome, thank you, Julie. And yeah, it's, it's so interesting and awesome to hear about the ways that y'all have grown with your businesses. Um, since the program a couple of years ago. So we definitely have to catch up. I wanna hear all about Factory and um, what y'all are doing. So um, I wanna go ahead and open it up to attendees. And if you have any questions right now about the application or program um, expectations, please go ahead and ask those. You can drop them in the chat if you like, um, if you're not able to unmute. Um, so yeah, I'll give it a couple seconds. Yes, Jessica. Thank you. This sounds really excited. I uh, have a great idea for a website, but I also have a full-time job. So I just want to know what the time commitment for Accelerator was. Um, I'll jump in on that one. Um, so, you know, we do ask that anybody <clears throat> in the cohort has four to five hours a week to work on the business. Um, 
We're changing the structure a little bit this year from the way that it's been the past couple of years. Um, for the first two years that we ran the cohort, it was um, deep pandemic time. So it was essentially all virtual. Um, this year we're changing it up. So there's going to be a weekly in-person workshop on Wednesdays, we think. Um, and so basically it would be um, in-person requirement for probably about an hour and a half each week. And then on a monthly basis, we would be doing a monthly cohort meeting. So the first Monday of the month, we would come together in person um, for two hours. Um, so that's on a monthly basis. And then on a weekly basis, it would be about an hour, an hour and a half to do workshop. But then there's time outside of that required to do homework, to watch the videos. We're also this year using an online learning platform. So a lot of the, one of the cool things, actually the outcome of doing Zoom meetings for two years of the cohort, we're able to use some of the that video content that we got that's still very relevant. So, so it's digestible in like an online learning, you know, video. So you'd watch a video and then come to the workshop with that same workshop leader and dig in and actually work together with the cohort. So we say about four to five hours a week. And then, but, but that's kind of to do all of the work, the required meetings would be an hour on Wednesdays weekly, and then two hours once a month on Monday mornings. Would this be um, after like 5 p.m. or do you know yet? They're during the work day. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, they're, they're during the work day between nine and five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that question, Jessica. Um, I do want to kind of ask Julie, Lilia, and Candice um, how they felt about that particular time commitment. Um, I know 2020, fall of 2020 and spring of 2021 was a bit of a weird time in terms of how much time we may have had. <laughs> um, but yeah, for y'all, what was that like? What was the um, you know commitment to the time and the hours that you gave? So um, it was because, you know, when I started Accelerate Her, I was working, you know, I was teaching full time and, um, and, you know, playable media was a part time commitment. And I had, um, so I can appreciate, right, like, well, is this going to be something else? And how is this going to rearrange my schedule? And, and what's that going to look like? Um, what I found was it was really doable because of um, the support that I was able to get from y'all to kind of talk through. Can y'all hear me? I'm sitting outside and I know that there's the um, big old train going in the yeah. background. Your voice is coming like through. Everybody in Denton needs to honk their horn right now. Um, but anyway, but the other thing that I did was I, um, my side gig wasn't a secret to my employer. So I was able to talk to them about having this opportunity and what um, the little bit that it would require from me. But what, what it was is like the time that I gave to the program was really, really hands-on. So it was like, if I need this two hours, then it's two hours that I'm going to be doing the work. It wasn't like that I needed a bunch of additional hours to do a bunch of extra work, right? So then the little bit of other time that I ended up giving to working on my business actually ended up being part of the moment only I wanted to, right? So then I could take 30 minutes in the evening and work on something or prep for our next meeting or, you know, have coffee with Lilia and Candice. I mean, I guess this was have coffee on Zoom so we could chat about something, all of that. Um, so it ended up being really reasonable, but I do think one of the key things was to be able to say to my, um, my main gig, like, hey, I have this really neat opportunity. They were excited for me. And so then I found that they were very supportive um, of the of what I was doing. I don't know. Yeah, they didn't necessarily, neither did I expect that I was going to end up signing <laughs> at the end of that school year. But um, but you know, that might that's not necessarily something that that everybody wants to do. Like, so anyway, that's that that's what it was for me. Thanks, Julie. Um, I'm glad that the program kind of empowered you to be able to 
go ahead and say goodbye. I'm going to focus on my my side hustle. Um, can I, I oh, I can see I a couple. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I be more specific? Do you know when exactly the Wednesday one would be? Like what time? You're muted, Heather. I got told the other day, it's 2022, it's too late to still be muted while you're talking on Zoom. <laughs> um, in, in the past couple of years, they've been at one o'clock. Um, we potentially have a little bit of flexibility if it's better for folks to do it on the lunch break and to do it at noon. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. So, it, but but it, it, a lot of it, I want to say that the first time that we established it, we kind of knew that general time frame that we wanted it to be in. And we did a doodle poll to make sure that we found something that really worked for, for everybody that was in the cohort. And we and we honed in on that one o'clock time. Um, but we probably have a little wiggle room there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Heather. All righty, I see a couple of hands up. Um, Tanya or Tanya, sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly, please correct me. Um, and Donna's as well. I don't know who raise their hands first, but um, go for it. Donna, you wanna go ahead? Oh, you can go, Tanya. Okay, and it's actually Tanya. So you had it right the first time, Great. <laughs> which is Thank fine. Um, just a couple of quick questions. So one, one is really lingering for me in my head right now. I've been in business in some form or fashion for some time while also working a full-time corporate job. I'm starting to get in that mindset finally after many years of finding my niche. Like I know where I wanna be, I know what I wanna do. And it's time for me to start transitioning full-time into that space, the space that I've been playing in for the last year to two years. But my question is this, for this Accelerate Her program, is this really more about people who are at the very beginning stages of figuring out what their idea is and they're going to leave with the result of figuring out that this is the idea and now I wanna launch it off or can it be someone who has had an idea but has not had the guts, I'm gonna admit that, to go ahead and really like make it fly. Mm -hmm. That is my question, that's number one. And then the second question just is how many people are selected? So how many people are in a pod, if you will? Mm -hmm. Tanya, I'm going to take your first question because that was me. Um, I worked corporate fashion for three years. I was a tech designer and I was in, I was running at 21, a whole department, like by myself. Like I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is where I'm meant to be. But on the side, I had my blog and I was yeah. like, this is really fun. This is just fun. And then slowly, but surely my brain was like, wait, I can like, do that full time eventually. Like that's the goal is to eventually do the blog full time. And then I joke that COVID kind of forced me to go full time because my company furloughed the entire company. We were all mm -hmm. furloughed on a Zoom call, super fun. And I had to sign it for unemployment. I had my moment of like, WTF am I going to do? Cried to my husband, cried to my family. And I finally was like, you know what? It's time. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is what this, this, there's no better time than now. And so I fully jumped into, all right, I'm going to act like this is my, my main gig. And I kind of made it my main gig via COVID. Um, but having that moment of like, what am I going to do? There is no stability right now. Like, oh my gosh, like, you know, um, so going into the Accelerate Here program, I was already pretty established here in Denton as a Denton blogger, one of the top Denton bloggers in the area. But the Accelerate Here program helped me refine some of the like things that I hadn't even thought about. Like one of them was finances. You know, you, you everybody every business has to make money, and but refining that detail of like, okay. Have you thought about selling a product? Have you thought about, you know, doing UGC content? Have you thought about, you know, just offering your services as like just businesses coming to you and say, hey, I need social media help. Okay, here's what I can offer you, you know, things like that. Accelerator program really helped me kind of refine 
what I was already doing to be very successful and continue it into being my full-time gig. Even to this day, it's still, I still do that full-time. I have a fun little, I have fun little part-time things I do on the side, but my full-time gig is to be a blogger and is to be a content creator. And honestly, I don't think if I hadn't been in the accelerator program, I would, I would be saying that right now. So Mm -hmm. I had one other thing I wanted to jump in to what Lilia said is um, at the time that we were in the accelerator, you really had different like businesses that were at different stages. I think we were all a little bit something different in where our businesses were. And I feel like some of us like Julie, like Lilia ended up in different places than they thought they would at the end of the program. One of my favorite things about the program though, and the way that Heather has it set up is that she really challenged you to establish your own goal for the program. And then we're held accountable to that goal. So it's very much about, we're going to give you all the resources and the mentoring and the time together to workshop on some of these things. But, you know, it's up to us individually to ask ourselves, what is that thing that we really need right now? And will we accomplish that in this next however many weeks? So I think that allows for people to be at different stages, all different types of businesses, but all working towards our own individual goals. Yeah, and one final thing that I'll add to that is we do focus on early stage, right? We like somebody who's generating $500,000 or million dollars in revenue every year or already is running big teams of people. That's not what this program is for, but, but to me, whether you've had an idea and you're trying to make those steps or you, it's a new idea and like you've got all that momentum wrapped up right at once, there's still some really foundational things that we help you set and establish those individ, individual goals that Candace mentioned. And then really, and, um, and to answer the last question that you asked, The cohorts both times have been, well, six and seven entrepreneurs in each one. So really pretty small. And that allows us to provide a lot of hands-on support because because everybody is kind of doing something a little bit different. We don't have an industry specific focus, but we're trying to make sure that we're helping each entrepreneur meet those individual goals that they have set um, and help provide all those tools that you need to do it. Thank you. Great questions, Tanya. Thank you. Um, and then we have Donna and Marcia have their hands raised as well. So Donna, if you'd like to go ahead. Ah, uh, yes, I'm so glad you're having this. And so after following you guys for about the last two years, <laughs> I have finally submitted an application yesterday after I got off the call. And I'm concerned because I'm in Houston and I would need to attend virtually. It wouldn't really be feasible for me to drive to Denton uh, once a week. And so I'm hoping that that's not a strict rule or that there are exceptions. It's interesting, I got my my MFA from Texas Women's by commuting from Houston, which was not an easy commute. And so I didn't have to come that often, but it was one of the ways that I was able to maintain my family and work and still finish my degree, which I was so grateful for. Um, So it was that as well as though I have been doing this full time for several years, but I still feel like I'm doing it on a shoestring and don't have enough expansion in my mind to really see how it can grow. Although I think it's got a lot, my business has a lot of potential and I know I have had a really steep learning curve. So I'm still really, really interested in having that foundation for the finances, the budgeting, how to really know how to delegate and set up SOPs. You know, I'm learning all this new lingo, but I really, you know, feel like this is a group I have lost me and Julie, you guys have known I've been showing up at Stoke very steadily. I'm one of your Mm -hmm. regulars. So it has, I've gained so much, but I want more. And so I think that, you know, that's why I'd like to be considered and uh, wanted to really appreciate coming and participating. So I'm glad to know that it is a small cohort and I would like to hope that it would still be considered to be remote to some, you know, so that I, if, if, if it's a possible that I'm selected, I could participate. Thanks. 
So um, can we let Kimberly chime in on that a little bit? And I think that would maybe provide some clarity and uh, about our other programs. Sure. Yep. Hello, everyone. I, I have my camera off because I had a little procedure this morning and I am not camera ready in any way, shape or form. Um, but I'm so excited to, oh, just to hear everybody's experience um, in this program. And I have only met Heather once and it was at an all day Stoke event that I absolutely loved. I believe that I um, had a great time with Julie in um, the, uh, the playable portion of that, of that program. But, and I hope you don't mind Heather that I bring this up. Donna, we will actually be having an Accelerate Her Cohort in Houston. The oh. application opens, we are hoping for the application to open right after Labor Day. Um, we cool. just received confirmation of our location and we're working on our business advisor. And again, Heather, I don't wanna take from your program, but I wanna make sure that Donna has the best experience she can have. And I do think that being in person with each other, I only sat through two sessions of another one of our incubators and I couldn't believe how close these women were and they were all at different stages, early stages, but different. But they were so um, nurturing of each other. I think they learned a lot from each other as well as from the group. So um, again, don't wanna take from um, what you can get out of Stoke, but I just do want to let you know that there is an accelerator that will be starting in Houston uh, in the fall. Thanks. Have you tried out IONS, the new location IONS for a- I have been to ION, but I don't feel that it's the right environment for what we do because we provide um, actual desks for every person that's in the cohort. It's almost like you have your little, your own little office. It's not enclosed, but um, the ION is amazing at what they do, but I feel like their target market is different than a truly woman-owned starting up. Um, I I once told someone that ION is kind of like the nightclub of the 80s for entrepreneurs. You mm -hmm. know, it is such a cool yeah. place to be and to get ideas. But as far as a working cohort, I didn't feel it was the best for us. Um, and they didn't apply. So <laughs> is it going to still be a free program or do you have yeah. to, is there, okay, excellent. Yeah. So Donna, it's you're on our email list. So um, once that information is put out officially, um, it will be sent out to all of our email contact lists. So will I not be included in the application for Denton if I choose to do the other, or is it that I could do both just because the other one's not going to happen until you said after Labor Day? In other words, um, since I've already submitted my application to Denton, is it is it possible that I might get selected for that one? And and or it, would I be ultimate? Would I be you know eliminated because you're going to be doing a Houston location? Um, I mean, I I don't know exactly the answer to that. I do know that I mean we've never every single person that has been in the cohorts. Um, so far in, in this program is DFW based because just because of the nature of, um, of, of what we're doing and, and what, so, so it's a little different. So, so this program, right, is a partnership between TW and Stoke. And so we're, our goal is to focus on DFW. TWU is starting these programs throughout the state to focus on their individual communities. So I don't exactly know, but I think it just may be a better outcome for you if you were to do the one that's based in your community, because then your connections are in your local community and it's essentially the same I mean, you know, you would still be involved in right all the other stroke things that happen virtually that you would like to. Um, so. I'm not exactly sh sure, 
you know, I would say apply to both. This program won't start until October anyway. I don't know what the dates for the Houston program are. Thanks. Not to get people in Houston too. Yeah, our current goal is that it would start um, in late October. Um, so probably starting around the same time frame, the application hopefully being open through the month of September. And Heather, thank you so much. I was not sure exactly. <laughs> I wanted to tread carefully there, but I agree with you in that the in-person is, is it, it is a vital part of it. Uh, we just had a quick question in the chat about the length of the program. Yes, and Heather answered it from October to February. So it's a five month program. Um, and Marcia, we thank you for <laughs> waiting so patiently to ask your questions that you're up. Hi, everybody. It's good to see everyone. And hi, Donna Lisa, where'd you go? I don't see you on the screen. There you are. Hi, <laughs> haven't seen you in a while. Okay, so I have several questions. And um, the first one is about the application time frame. I'm just going to go over the three questions. Um, the mm -hmm. application time frame, the types of projects that are, you know, suitable for the cohort. And I did get some feedback on that one. And about as far as like what type of support would I, you know, can I expect? from participating in the cohort. All righty. Um, any graduates want to take on those questions? Or one of them? <laughs> I'll speak to the second um, piece. Oh, go ahead. Now you start. Okay. <laughs> I'll speak to that just because it's one thing I remember. Honestly, when you said the program was October to February, that kind of blew my mind. I feel like it went by so fast. Like I didn't even remember that we were doing it that long, which is a good thing because I enjoyed myself so much. But on the support piece, I would say that, I mean, I don't know if you guys are still doing this, Heather, but one thing that I really loved is that one of the things that we were challenged to do was to really connect with some of the mentors that are available that lead workshops. So you have the opportunity to speak with um, with established entrepreneurs on a regular basis. And they're really excited and eager for, for that time, for you to put some time on their calendar, set up an hour and just ask questions. I mean, sometimes I would just kind of vomit <laughs> my like 20 questions on these very willing, engaged entrepreneurs and was just incredibly lucky and grateful to have that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, and then also Heather is also super su supportive and someone else spoke to this, but just again, being in the cohort as well, just the women that you're in the cohort with, you, you really do just create a really special con connection. Even if I don't speak with these ladies every day, I'm always just so happy to see them and I follow them on their socials, on LinkedIn. I'd like to know what's going on with them. I feel like I could reach out to either one of them right now and say, hey, could you help me with something? And I know they absolutely would. And I would do the same anytime Heather wants us to speak for something. I'm always happy to do it. So I feel like there's just a supportive spirit that is within just the fabric of Accelerate Her that I really appreciate. So again, I think that we're held to some challenges that are absolutely there to get you to somewhere different than you were when you started, but I never felt that I was underwater. I always felt that the resources were available. Um, but with that said, a lot of it is really on you to kind of make those connections, raise your hand, to set up those meetings with those mentors. Like you'll have a list of people, right? But it's on you to reach out and to engage and to make sure you're keeping up with your goals. So it's kind of like a, a give and take there, but I always felt and still feel really supported by Accelerate, by Accelerate Her. Thank you. And in terms of, I was going to talk about, you asked Marcia, the kinds of projects. So, um, you know, it was mentioned that we I mean, had I just need goals. to add this. You would be the one that jumped in on the projects because you're that process thinker. <laughs> <laughs> we had different goals for our businesses. We had different, we were in, you know, different places in our businesses. Some were still like getting off the ground and trying to, um, figure out which ideas had some traction in the market. Some had been selling for a little bit, you know, and some were building out technology, right? Like different things like that. Um, 
So, and all that to say, it's really open for what is your goal for your business? Are you trying new revenue streams? Do you need to add to your revenue streams? Do you need to learn what a revenue stream is, right? I mean, like maybe that's a little bit early, but but the thing is like, you're gonna um, sort of be able to be de to determine what that is for yourself and ex execute on that project that makes sense for your business. It's, it's pretty open in that respect. And then, uh, you know, Seconding what Candace said about the mentoring, we had Stoke has access to such a rich community, and the mentors are so supportive and willing to give their time. Um, as well as what I really found was we were mentoring each other. It was sort of like this co-mentorial relationship where we could say, "Here's where I'm at in my daily life." In addition to, "Here's who I can talk to about what my financials look like." Right. So that was um, something that I really appreciate. It's just that that uh, collaboration that happened, not just from the top down, but in both directions. Ditto. Thank you. And what's the application time frame? The application is open now and closes August 22nd. Um, from there, basically, we vet the applications um, down and do um, interviews with people um, just to make sure that we have a really good understanding of what the business is and um, that the person, you know, a, a lot of entrepreneurship is really um, <sighs> It's like about like the person, right? It's like, do they believe in this thing that they're doing and are they passionate? And like, are they, do they understand, um, you know, entrepreneurship just isn't for everybody. Um, and of course, you know, Marcia, we know you and Donna, y'all like show up. And so we, we know y'all, um, but for some of the applicants, we, we, you know, it's nice to just kind of get on a zoom with people, um, hear that, hear what they're saying about their business. Um, and so then from the interview process, then um, we make our selections and the program starts in uh, the first Monday of October is what we're planning. But yeah, the application is open until August 22nd. So there's still, I think, what, three and a half weeks left. And it and won't it, take that long to submit yeah. the application. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it. it's really, it's a really high level um application there's not we are not asking you to go into the weeds or submit your pro formas or anything like that it's like what is your business what are your needs you know what kind of support are you looking for um that's the application is pretty simple my problem was you only ask for one one problem i could i could have listed several but it's a very easy application i was glad to see that you didn't need a whole lot of text and i was able to do it yeah quickly. So I appreciated that. Yeah, it could be done in probably 30 minutes to an hour easily. That's, that's probably a, a, a big overstatement. That's like, if you like, <laughs> have a lot of like thinking to do, but um, probably most people don't because, you know, if you have a clear understanding of what it is you're doing, then. You know what too, though, on that point, and this has come from someone probably like the other ladies who have at this point filled out about a trillion applications for programs and grants and funding and all types of stuff. One thing I do recommend is just, and I don't know Heather, if you can see it ahead of time, but sometimes I'll do an application. I'll just copy and paste all the questions somewhere and just sit with it and think on it for a second and then come back to it. So while I do believe Heather, you can do it in 30 minutes to an hour. You do want to make sure you're submitting a succinct application. So I don't suggest you like open it and fill it out the same day with any application for this stuff. Also, because like there's certainly been times where I thought I was super killing it. It was probably like on some type of like high of exhaustion and then went back and looked at my application and was like, girl, what, what, what were we doing here? <laughs> like, you're not like, this is not, so just don't do it all in one day, but mm -hmm. absolutely you can complete the answers in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank you. How many applications do you usually get in? Hmm. I'm going to let Heather feel that one from year one and year two. Um, 50 to 80. 
So we typically do have to winnow it down. Yeah, that's kind of why we leave the application open um, by about a month, month and a week. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that help you rule out a person? I'm just asking for that transparency. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I think it's a great question. So, you know, like I said, um, when I'm doing the initial vetting of the applications, what I'm looking for is somebody to have a, an actually really clear idea of the problem, the problem that they're solving. Um, right? Entrepreneurship is really around like your customer has a problem and you're solving it. So do you know what that problem is? And are you, sol and, and do you understand what you're doing to be able to solve that for your customer? Um, so if you know your business, then, um, then you can pretty clearly identify that. Um, so that's first and foremost, to be able to, to, to succinctly describe that. Um, Something that I think definitely doesn't work for us is um, we try to focus on, on, on businesses that have some potential for growth. So there are people that, are, that have identified that there are ways that they want to grow or scale. And we're not talking like that the goal is necessarily to like be acquired or go public, right? Like that's not really the kind of program that this is. I mean, definitely some people have big visions, but we wanna see that there's people that are using technology in some way to simplify their systems, to make the business work for them, to be able to um, you know, make better profit margins to be able to hire people. So um, ideally people that have some idea of how, how they're going to grow. Um, and so like a one person consultancy that only ever wants to be a one person consultancy, that's probably not a great fit for our program. Um, you know, we want people that are going to be able to grow and have a, a bigger impact on the economy. Um, and then I think the, the other thing, and this is really, um, kind of cohort specific is we, um, you know, we want to make sure that our networks of people can really help people meet their needs. And, and because there are, especially in the DFW area, there are incubator programs and accelerator programs that are really niche specific, right? There are healthcare, there's retail, right? There are things that, um, have a lot of like specialty stuff um, that, that requires a deep level of knowledge in an industry. Um, and again, that's not really us. So we find um, a lot of our, um, a lot of what we're looking for in applicants are, are folks that have um, maybe lifestyle businesses, maybe educational businesses, creative businesses, um, you know, something that doesn't require a lot of really specific industry deep knowledge um, because we just can't provide the right kind of support and there are other options out there. So um, off the top of my head, those are some, some things that, that we look for in terms of fit. Thanks, Heather. All righty, any other questions? from participants. Okay. Um, I just, do you mind if I say something really quick, Please. Heather? Um, I just want you guys to know that Heather and her team at Stoke, um, they put together a phenomenal curriculum or program for the Accelerate Her. Um, I'm not super involved in it. Um, I do get um, put in kind of along the way. So I get to kind of see the beginnings and then kind of the ends. And there's a huge amount of growth that happens in the time that, that, that you're in that program. So if you're on the fence about doing it, just know um, that if you're looking to be somewhere different in your business, moving it forward, then something like this is a great program to do it. Again, Heather and her team put together a phenomenal program, as you can see with the um, past cohort members on here, um, 
you know, they, maybe they started out one way, but they've been able to pivot and they've been able to do that because of the, um, the information and the things that they've learned inside of that uh, Accelerate Her program. So we always love partnering um, with Heather and the team at Stoke and it's always a phenomenal experience, so. Thank you, Donna Lisa. We appreciate that. Um, I see a raised hand. Yes, Donna. Uh, yes, I was just wondering if the Houston location is going to use some of the same programs that Heather and Stoke have put together, some of their workshops and training and stuff, or would it be completely new? So this is all, so the, the Houston thing, the only thing that we're saying is that we are going to have the, a, a Accelerate Her program in the Houston area. Um, and then more details will be put out about that as we get closer and get kind of more of that stuff concrete. Um, but it is, um, it is an Accelerate Her program. And of course, we will be doing our due diligence to bring the same kind of exquisite programming that Heather and the team at Stoke does, so. Alrighty, we are at 12.46. Um, Julie, Candice, Lilia, any final thoughts or tips for um, participants attending live and then maybe others who will watch this recording? Kind of just to piggyback off of what um, Heather said a few times, just, you know, you're going to get what you put it like you're going to get out what you put into this program. You know, the three of us definitely are in different places than when we started and ended the program. But I feel like we got exactly what we wanted out of this program because we put exactly what we wanted into this program. This is a program that is like very self it, it not very self-led, but it's self-led in that, you know, you have mentors that you have that list and you can reach out to them if you want to, or, you know, you have these dates and you can, you can get to them if you want to, you know, but if you're like, oh, I'm going to cram, I have, you know, this meeting is tomorrow and I'm going to do everything I was supposed to do last week and an hour before this meeting, you might find that this program does not give you what you expected. And it's very much, you know, the Accelerate Here team is kind of like your personal reminders of like, hey, have you done your business plan? Hey, have you signed up to meet with a mentor? You know, and for me, that was great because I have ADHD and I'm like all over the place. Julie, Candace, Heather, last me, they can all say that. But this program really helped me stay on track along with, you know, growing my business on the right track. And then on top of learning everything, applying that to my business and then getting, gaining skills that I can now apply even today as my business has changed and evolved. So you definitely get what you put into this program. And I highly suggest you give it a hundred percent of your, just like everything, because you will be so proud of the person that you become after this program, whenever you give yourself a hundred percent to this program, so. Thanks, Julia, love to hear it. So I wanna say, um, the thing that Accelerate Her understands is what a woman's life and a woman's experience looks like, right? So we're really diverse, we, you know, some of us are younger, some of us are older, some of us have done um, various jobs, and some of us have worked on our business full time, like all of that kind of stuff. And yet there's still that thing that this is for you, right? There's lots of programs out there and places that we can go where we can get, have a rich experience, but this is for the woman's experience. And, and um, whether you identify, um, you know, like it, 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 I say, I want to say that I that that's in a diverse definition, right? Um, and so I think that's important because I've been in all kinds of spaces, but I've only been in a few spaces that really get what our lives and what our careers and what our goals look like. So, um, you know, some of us have young children, some of us have older children, some of us don't have children, like all of those different things um, that I think are really important 
because we have full lives even as we are launching made gigs and side gigs and building technology and trying new revenue streams and all of that kind of stuff. And I, so that is something that um, we're not always thinking about, but it's really, um, it's worth the price of admission and yet UWU is taking care of that for us, right? So, um, so I just want to say whatever your reservations are, whatever your life looks like, whatever the stresses are, whatever the things on your mind, submit your application because um, it's going to meet, this is a program that met me where I was, right? It's going to meet you where you are. Um, and so, so I guess I just wanted to throw that in there. It's uh, worth saying, not, not one of those, it goes without saying, we have to say it. Yes, thank you, Julie. It's true. I, I, I mean, I work for Stoke, at Stoke, with Stoke, but I do 100% feel that way about um, watching folks go through Accelerate Her these past two years. Um, and then, you know, occasionally popping in to facilitate a call or something. But um, yeah, I've definitely seen that. And it's, it's great. Candace? Um, the one thing I would just add is that I just think the program is really great. And I think that everyone's kind of alluded to that. If you just enjoy, independently of what you're working on, if you just enjoy being in community with like-minded women, you know, like I feel that um, kind of like as Julie was alluding to, like we have so many different backgrounds, no one's business. I mean, it could not have been like six or seven different businesses, right? Um, all different places in our family lives and our personal lives, like all over the board. But what I would say is that we were just like-minded in our desire to learn and grow and challenge each other and be challenged. And like, I don't, I, I don't know, for, for me, it's like when I commit to something like this, like it's not just for what I can get out of it, but hopefully it's for what I can give to it as, as well. Like it's something that just means so, so much to me. And I think it's such a blessing and a privilege to be in community with women like this. So I don't know what my last thought on that is, but that's just kind of how I feel about it is it's just being in community with like-minded women is just such a, it is just an energy giver, at least for me. And I think that if that's what you're seeking or what you need, and especially if you're an entrepreneur who's like still on your own and you don't feel like you have that team yet. Like I felt like I had coworkers. Like that was my first time ever feeling like that. And at the time I was working full time on the business. So I think those are just some of the things that really were just so good and so necessary at that point in time. So if you're feeling that urge to do this, there's probably something for you here as well. Thank you, Candace. Okay, we are at 12.53. Um, Heather, do you have any closing thoughts for Donna Lisa? Um, this is the highlight of my day. <laughs> um, it's really great to hear, um, I don't know, to hear reflections on the program. Um, I do think, I mean, so, you know, I don't think it's selfishly because we're here to, to um, you know, support other entrepreneurs, but I agree. I do think it's a really fantastic um, special program and experience. Um, you can see it, right? It's like we had alumni from cohort number one come back in their specific areas of specialty and things that they know really well. And each of these women that are on this call, this is half of the first cohort, but they led workshops for cohort number two, and there will be people from cohort number one and two that contribute to cohort number three. And we really look forward to building a really strong and fantastic alumni network from this Denton program. And I'm really excited to see the alumni from across the state grow. Um, and I, I just think um, the, the power of women supporting women is, um, is huge. Um, and so I'm just, I'm really excited for, um, yeah, for, for what's to come. And I'm grateful that y'all are all here. Awesome. Thanks, Heather. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, I will share this recording with all event sites registrants. I think some of you mentioned that you had pals who couldn't make it um, during the 12 o'clock hour, but this will be up. Just going to do some editing and trimming and I'll post it on Stokes YouTube. Please share far and wide. Um, and if you have any questions, we're here for you. Um, you can email info at soakdenton.com. One of us will field that. Um, yeah, all right, looking at the chat here. Okay, thank y'all. Great. 
if there's not anything else, I'm giving you back five minutes of your day. 